you'll take. Thank you, Lord. Amen. All right. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I want to read two verses today. If you stand, please, for the reading of God's Word. Amen. If you're not able to do that, we understand. Amen. But if you're able, it'll be deeply appreciated. Chapter 11, verse number 1. Amen. The Bible says, cast your bread upon the waters, for you will find it after many days. Now let's go down to verse number 4. He who observes the wind will not sow, and he who regards the clouds will not reap. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we need you tonight, this morning, excuse me. God, I'm asking you by the power of the Holy Ghost that you'd anoint me. God, because there's all kinds of people under the sound of my voice. And I realize that I'm nothing but a messenger boy. And I'm asking you, Holy Ghost, that you'd speak to their heart where they're at, what's going on in their life. I need you. I depend upon you. If anything good comes out of today, it's not because of me, but it's because of you. And I'm dependent upon you, God, to minister to each heart and each life. And I'll give you praise for that in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. God bless you. you may be reseated. Hallelujah. I love these particular books that I'm reading out of today because if you look at Proverbs and you look at Ecclesiastes, you're, you're reading from a man who God gave wisdom and he took that wisdom. There's some people that question that Ecclesiastes is not wrote by Solomon, but there, there is a lot of instances in this particular writing that indicates that he did write it. Amen. And so when we look at this, Solomon was one of the, not one, but one of the wisest men in our world. Amen. Because when he, when he went to God in prayer, God said, uh, what do you want? He didn't ask God for money. He didn't ask God for riches. He didn't ask God for anything like that. He said, God, just give me the wisdom to lead your people. Amen. When, they, when he prayed that, God said, I will give you that wisdom. And because you didn't ask me for riches and because you didn't ask me for all this other stuff, I will give you that also. Amen. I'm here to tell you, sometimes we don't understand how God operates. We want God to give, 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 give. Sometimes we need to be given back to God. Amen. Given to God in a relationship. Given to God in praise. Given God in worship and adoration. Because I'm here to tell you, my friend, when you give God, in relationship, you open doors for your life and God will flow into your life and do things that you didn't think were possible. He can turn around a situation that will blow your mind. He can take a child that's wayward and pull him back into the grace of God and save him and deliver him. He can take a body that is broken and busted and seems very disgusted. But thanks be unto God, God can take it and he can heal your body. I'm here to tell you, my friend, your God is an awesome God. Your God is a powerful God. Your God is a God that understands everything going on in your life. And it's sometimes you have to wake up and just get still and know he's God. Woo, I feel you today. Solomon writes these particular things and he walks us down through life, letting us know that he took the wisdom of God and he went through all these different categories of life and he found out that life is full of vanity and vexation of the soul. He even concludes at the end of uh, Ecclesiastes to keep the commandments of God and live. Amen. Hallelujah. He, he wasn't 
isn't just talking about learning to live by some rules and regulations. He's talking about uh, knowing the person God, knowing Jesus, experiencing Jesus, walking with Jesus, and having a life with him. But here we see Solomon saying something so powerful that he says, cast your bread upon the waters. I love this. Hallelujah. He said, cast it. Cast it. Cast it. So if I'm going to cast, i got to first realize that's my responsibility. Amen. I've got to realize that if I'm going to go anywhere, if I'm going to get to what this promise is about to bring to my life, I've got to understand that this is a relationship and this is not about just doing some rules and regulations, but it's about a relationship with the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit took this man and he wrote, particularly and meticulously everything out so that you and I as believers could take the word of God and we could understand that God wants a relationship with us. And so he said, cast your bread upon the waters. Amen. I think, I think it's so interesting that God said cast because God was making me understand that this ain't a one person deal. I've got to accept the responsibility. I've got to do it. I've got to make up my mind. I can't let somebody else do it for me. Even though I like this uh, brother Bobby here, amen, and I appreciate him, and he'd probably do it for me, and he'd cast for me. It's not up to him to get my promise. It's not up to him to get me where I need to be. I've got to make up my mind. I would like to ride his coattail to heaven, but I ain't going to be able to do that. I've got to realize if I'm going to experience the things that God has for me, I've got to choose to go where God wants me to go. Amen. I've got to surrender my will. I can't play around with God. I'm surrendered one time, and next time I'm not. God wants a commitment. God wants a dedication. God wants a consecration. That says, God, you're my father, you're my lover of my soul, and I will serve you. I will serve, I will serve. So he said, cast, cast it, cast it. Okay, God, I get it, I get it, cast it. But what do you want me to cast? My bread. Wait a second, man. That's my substance. That's the stuff that, that I work for. That's, so you're asking me to cast self-sacrificially and just cast bread on the water? Bread on the water represents the fact that, I don't know about you, you don't mix bread and water. Does anybody like just dipping the bread in water and just start eating bread? It's going to be all soggy. It's not going to be anywhere. What is God trying to get me to grab hold of? And I'm going to take my substance that, that, yes, God blessed me with. God helped me get what I got. And God made me able to get where I've got. And now he wants me to take this resource and he wants me to let go of it. That bothers me, Lord, because now I had to die to myself to do that. I had to let this go in my life. I had to realize that this relationship with you is not about just going to church and not about just going around other people that say they're Christians, but, but now this relationship is me trusting you. And now, and now this, is, this is tough for me because can I trust you? Cast my bread upon the water. And in not many days it will return. 
So, you, so you're teaching me that I've got to take my resource and I've got to give it to you, amen, and believe you to bring it back around to me. That means when I pray, I'm going to believe you to do that prayer. When I give, I'm going to believe you to bring it back to me. When you give me a promise, I'm going to believe that you bring it back to me. So I've got to understand that i got to live by faith. If I go to Walmart and I say, listen, I want some of that, I want some groceries, and I want this, and I lay down and say, i got faith. They, they sit there and look at me. I don't care what you want to do. In this world, you got to give me money. Amen, because it's the currency of this world. But if I'm going to operate in God's world, I've got to operate in faith. Amen. I've got to trust God. I've got to let things go. I've got to let God take care of things. Cast your cares upon him because he cares for you. But I've got to understand in this situation, when God has given me wisdom literature, if I'm going to go to the next level, I've got to let it go. I've got to let it go. I've got to let it go. I gotta let it go. I gotta let it go. I've gotta sow into people's lives and I just gotta let that seed go. I've got to sow prayers in my life and I gotta trust God will do what he said he'll do. Ask and you shall receive. Seek and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be open to you. He that asketh, receiveth. He that seeketh, findeth. He that knocketh, it shall be opened unto you. Amen. So I've got to learn to give it to God. I've got to learn to build a relationship with him. I've got to trust him. I've talked to you many times. Isn't it amazing? We struggle with trust and we struggle with stuff like that. But not one of you did not disbelieve that that chair would hold you. You also buy cars, run up to a red light at 70 miles an hour and hit a brake and uh, you never saw the fluid in the lines. You never saw the brakes going onto the wheel to start slowing down. You never saw any of that stuff, but you trusted it. So don't tell me trust is too hard because trust isn't too hard. It's just a matter of you. Do you hear me? Oh, God. I don't know why God led me this way today, but I, I, I'm telling you, I feel God speaking to somebody that you're going to have to trust me if you're going to go to the next level. If you're going to experience the flow of the Spirit like you want to see it, you're going to have to trust me. You're going to have to give me, you're going to have to lay some things in my life, and that's going to take consecration on your part that you don't have right now. You're, 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 you're a Christian, and you love God, and yes, you got things, but you're not willing to let let things go. Amen. You're not willing to go after the promises of God because if I'm going to cast it on the waters, I've got to trust God. And I'm amazing because I, I started studying about waters. I thought, I thought, okay, God, let's talk about waters. And he, he leads me to Genesis, the first chapter, and the very second verse of Genesis says, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. So if I'm going to experience the Spirit of God and His flow in my life, i got to be willing to cast some stuff. Because the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Okay, God. So they move on the face of the waters. What, what happened? The very next scripture says, and God said, let there be light and there was light 
Amen. Here was an earth that was in total chaos. It was in total darkness. It was totally everything. It was resting under the judgment of God. And the Holy Ghost takes a judgment situation and moves on it, and he starts turning a judgment situation around, and he starts giving light where there's darkness. Starts turning it around. He takes alcoholic and sets him free. He takes a drug addict and boom, and shines light into his darkness. He takes the man who's promiscuous in his life and he takes his dark situation and boom, he shines light into his life situation and turns everything around. I love it. I love it. A person that is broken, busted, and disgusted, all of a sudden, boom, God says, let there be light. And there was light. And, and I know he wasn't talking about natural light because natural light didn't come till four days later. I know he wasn't talking about divine light because God is light. He's the one speaking. So what is he dealing with now? You've got to trust my word. Let there be light. He spoke his word. When he spoke his word, everything turned around. Darkness had to leave. Oh, God, who am I talking to? I'm telling you, there's sometimes, ladies and gentlemen, you are in a dark situation, and what you are just one word from God, seeing everything turn around. You may be in a situation in your life that you don't know what to do, but you just need that one word, amen, that's going to turn, return back, and turn every. God said, I send my word, and my word does not return void. Hallelujah. Let there be light. And there was light. Hallelujah. Go to Psalms 29 and 3. And I'm about finished. Coming there. Hallelujah. Somebody say praise the Lord. <laughs> Psalms 29 and 3. When you get there, say man. <laughs> Y'all beat me. 29 and 3. The Bible says the voice of the Lord is over the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord is over many waters. Oh, God. Did you hear that? The voice of the Lord is is over waters. Amen. God said, cast your bread. Put your substance into the move of the Holy Spirit and the voice of God. If you'll learn to put your stuff in that, you're going to watch God turn around and do great things in your life. Amen. But you got to be willing to let God have it. you got to be willing to turn it around. I, 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 feel, I feel today that somebody holding back on God and not letting God have his way in their life. Amen. Because I'm telling you, God can take your dark situation and he can boom, shine light into it. I could, I could walk down scripture. There, there was things in, in, in creation that when you first look at it, everything's covered with the waters of judgment. And, and God said, let there be light. And there was light. But even though God let there be light, it took another word from God to reveal other things that are in life. How many times have you and I got saved and got delivered and God touched our life and ministered to us and we get an attitude, well, I've arrived, amen. But I'm here to tell you that God just got one more word to speak in your life and he's going to show you something you've never seen before because I'm telling you on that day in creation, God said, let the earth appear and the waters come together, and the dry land appeared. They got to see something that they was not seeing before. How many things in your life are you not really seeing because you hadn't got there yet? 
God's got callings and anointings and things in your life, but he can't, he can't show you yet because you got to let God have some stuff. Oh, God. Some of God, the wisdom was from Solomon because he was trying to say there has to come a point in a man or a woman's relation point that we have to let things go. We have to give it to God. We have to trust him. We got to have faith in him. We got to be willing to fight the good fight of faith because if I throw my bread on the water, there's going to be times that I can't see where it is. I just got to believe it's going through the the process. Oh, y'all are quiet on me today. Go back to Ecclesiastes 11. I want to read one more and I'm finished. <laughs> Verse 4 said, And he who observes the wind will not sow and he regards the clouds will not reap. I love this. God said the person that casts upon the water and lets it go through the process is going to have return. But God said a man who regards the clouds will not sow. And a guy, a guy that prays attention to the wind will not go with it. Do you hear me? He won't give it. He won't give it. He won't go after it. I'm going to read that one more time. I didn't quote it right. He who observes the wind will not sow, and he who regards the clouds will not reap. He's talking about a farmer. He's saying... If, if a farmer has seed and he has something to throw out there and the, uh, put out there to, uh, be, to plant and to cause it to grow so he can have a harvest, so he can experience a blessing, so he can experience everything that God has for him, if he regards the winds, he won't do it because the wind, he's scared it's going to blow my seed away. If I pay attention to the clouds, oh no, I don't want to let the clouds because the clouds are going to rain and wash my seed away. But a man that's always worried about everything else never does anything. <laughs> so God said at the first, cast it. He reads down in the fourth verse to make us know this is what we struggle with. We don't go ahead and go for it because we let everything else keep us from doing what we need to do. This is what God spoke to me. We always want it to be a perfect situation before we'll ever move where God wants us to move. We never go after it unless it's got to be just right, and then that's my moment. And I tell you, my friend, that ain't ever going to happen. You ain't ever going to move in God. You ain't ever going to experience things. You know, God, you got to learn. The Bible said the violent take it by force. Do you hear me? Sometimes you got to be, hey, you know what? I don't care what hell's breaking loose against me. I'm going to keep going after God. I'm going to keep believing him. I'm going to keep trusting him. I'm not going to let anything keep me from experiencing what God wants to give me. I'm going to live by faith. If I let the winds mess with me, I ain't ever going to cast my seed. <laughs> Woo. I love it because they give the topology of, of the farmers on the river Nile, which is in Egypt. And during a certain time of the year, there's a storms come through there and different things, and the Nile gets up high and basically flood stages. And if the people who plant rice 
they, they, they basically just throw their seed out there and, and they know that it's going to sink down to the ground and then they know cows are going to walk over it after the waters recede and cows are going to walk over it and different things are going to walk over it, but they just trust that their seed is going to get pushed down in the ground and they're going to get a return on their harvest. But they can't see it. They can't, don't know for sure it's happening, but they just trust and throw their seed. My God, some people never get into ministry and experience things that God has for them because they're always waiting for the perfect moment. Amen. I don't know why I'm saying this, but I'm saying this because the Lord led me there. Amen. I had an uncle one time who was called to be an evangelist. He was a preaching machine. Amen. He couldn't, he couldn't hardly read. He had, had trouble, but he, he had a flow of the Holy Ghost about him, and he, he prophesied, and I've seen many things go, go on in his life, and those prophecies come to pass. I watched a doctor tell him, listen, you got cancer and you're going to die, and he went to prayer, and he prayed for hours a day and watched God. God, turn around cancer to be healing. Amen. He, he, was, a, he was a man of God. But he, he said, you know what? I'm going to trust God. <laughs> He'd tell you to trust God, but he never could make the step to be that evangelist. I trust you. Oh, <laughs> Sorry. I trust. I just can't do it, you know. Woo! God will give you miracles, brother. But I ain't willing to cast stuff. Do you hear me? I've got to start believing God myself. Do you hear me? I've got to let God take care of some things in my life. I can't wait to a perfect thing, the wind just right, the clouds just right, everything just right, and then I'll move because that day ain't going to happen. I've got to step out in faith right now. Do you hear me? I've got to step out in faith right now. Somebody say, step out in faith. Amen. Step out in faith. Because God said it's going to come back to you. And I don't know who I'm talking to today, but I'm saying to you, my friend, that God's fixing to do things in your life that will blow your mind. But it's going to take you making up your mind and saying, God, I trust you with my substance. I trust you with my life. I trust you with my ministry. I trust you with everything. And I'm telling you what's going to do is there's going to be a turnaround in your life. Oh, God, I even see children getting saved. I even see, I even see see victories happening in your life. I even see finances turning around. I even see things happening that you've never seen happen before simply because somebody says, yes, Lord. Yes. 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 Because a man sows gets a harvest. Hello? Let me ask you something. Have you been sowing lately? <laughs> do you sow to the spirit or do you sow to the flesh? What are you sowing? What are you casting? What are you throwing? Woo! Y'all are getting quiet on me. What are you doing? What are you cast? What are you sowing? What are you sowing? What are you sowing? Am I sowing contention? Am I sowing debate? Am I sowing strife? What am I sowing? Am I a peacemaker or a troublemaker? Amen. Am I an agonizer with God or am I an irritator of God? Do you hear me? Amen. What, what am I? What am I? I've got to make up my mind what I sow. What are you sowing? Amen. This person started casting his bread on the water, and because he did, things started happening. Amen. Isn't it amazing that we can believe God? We can give a missionary an offering and give them $200 and let them take that money or whatever we give them, give them money to go across the world and preach the gospel of Jesus Christ, and we'll believe we're going to get a return. 
But when it comes down to our lives, we don't do it. God, who am I talking to? God's challenging you. God's challenging you. God's challenging you today. It's time to step out. It's time to go there. It's time to start praying. It's time to start turning things around because I'm telling you, God's fixing to do miracles in your life. God's fixing to do a turnaround. If you want to believe that, look at Peter. He turned it around. He went ahead and cast it out there and said, I trust you, Lord. And the Lord turned around his whole life, and he ended up doing miracles. Amen. Walking by people, and God was healing them. He didn't even touch them. God was doing miracles in the name of Jesus. I'm here to tell you, amen. I thank you. You say that don't happen again anymore. My wife was just at the hospital, never touched the lady and she said God brought healing in her family you say God don't do that anymore I beg to differ God's still healing people God's still turning things around cast it if you're waiting on God God's telling you I'm waiting on you. You're looking for peace in your family? You need to cast some love. Hello? You waiting for a better job? Maybe you need to pay some more tithe. Oh, did I say that? I'm sorry. Do we not have faith that believe God can do it? Me and Sister Horn for years would pay tithe on what we wanted to make, not what we was making. Hello? Amen. And I'm telling you today, God brought me to that place. Oh, boy, y'all got quiet on me now. Does anybody want to count? I'm talking about living by faith, ladies and gentlemen. We've got to learn to walk there. We've got to learn to experience what God has for our lives. Amen. And everybody I've ever seen that done that had had a complete turnaround in their situation. And and God spoke to me and told me that somebody is fixing to see a complete breakthrough in their life. God's going to see a turnaround in their situation. God is going to see something. You're going to see something happen for you because God... God is going to do it in your life. Amen. Everybody standing to your feet. Victory, victory shall be mine. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I feel feel the Lord talking to me. I know it's a simple message, simple thought. But I feel like God's been speaking to me about somebody in this building. It's time to go. It's time to give it to God. What's holding you back? Is fear holding you back? God didn't give you a spirit of fear. I'm just not capable, Brother Horn. I don't have courage, is what you're saying. So the enemy's intimidated you to a point that you won't step out. Hello? So, So I want to give an altar call for people that are having trouble letting go. Because you see, SR Church loves you where you're at and what's going on in your life because we want to connect you with your Creator and we want you to experience the fact that God has a plan for you. Amen. And so today, I want to pray for you. I want to pray for you. How about it? Is anybody struggling? Anybody's struggling. If you're here, come. If you're here, come. If you're here, come. Yes. Yes. God's got a plan for you. You know what, guys? I love you. 
to 